Hello everyone, my name is Keith, and in this video we're taking a look at my second part of my Mavic Air 2 tips and tricks. This video is focusing on the DJI Fly app, as well as some miscellaneous rapid fire tips I've come across while shooting and flying with this drone. Again, this is part of my Mavic Air 2 course that includes video, a pre-flight checklist, and a creative LUT pack. You can enroll for free at courses.aerialguide.com. The link will be in the description below. My first tip for the Mavic Air 2 is to share footage and photos directly on social media from your drone. Sharing your social media stuff directly is pretty easy, but make sure you save your file to your device first, or you'll be sharing the low resolution version that's the cached version of your photos and videos. If you want to save the full resolution versions, you'll have to tap the play button icon in your app, find your clip, select the download button, and then you'll get a nice full resolution that is high quality enough to share on social media. If you're gonna share footage and photos directly from your drone and you don't wanna edit them very heavily, you should consider selecting the normal picture profile and not Cinelike. For best natural looking results right out of camera to your smartphone, shoot in the regular picture profile or the HDR mode. My second tip is to be careful when filming in the intelligent flight modes. While the Mavic Air has front, back, and downward facing obstacle avoidance, the Mavic Air 2 lacks side and top sensors, and that can be an issue if you're using some of the intelligent flight modes. For example, circling around an object, the drone isn't sensing objects on its side while you're orbiting your subject, so it won't be able to sense if there's an approaching object. My third tip is to turn off obstacle avoidance and fly close to objects, but pay attention to your screen. The DJI Fly app tells you when you're close to objects. If you pay attention to your screen while you're flying, there's bars on the top and bottom of the screen. This is the obstacle sense telling you if there's an object close by. The darker and larger the color gets, the closer the object is to your drone. Very handy feature to learn if you're flying and come across a rogue tree branch or something you don't see. Learning how to read those bars can save you from crashing your drone. My next tip isn't specific to the Mavic Air 2, but it's true for all cameras. Turn on your zebra stripes, histogram, and guidelines. These handy tools will help you when composing your shots and setting the correct exposure. In a nutshell, the zebra stripes or overexposure warning, as it's called in the DJI Fly app, will let you know when your highlights are too hot and clipping. This is helpful to not overexpose your footage. The histogram will allow you to read your exposure values at a glance to make sure there's no lights or darks clipping in your image. The left is pure black, the right is pure white. At first, it could be kind of intimidating reading the histogram, but it gets easier the more you use it and experiment around with it. But it's an important addition to your screen. The guidelines will help you make sure your lines are level and compose your shot correctly while you're flying. I have these enabled, I use the rule of third as well as the center to mark my screen. It's nice to know where the center of your screen is so if you're orbiting around an object, you can keep that right in the center and you know when you're getting the shot. I typically uh, don't use the cross grids because I think it just adds too much visual noise to the screen but you should select that option and see if that's something that you want. My next tip has to do with the gimbal, and thanks to a recent firmware update, DJI has allowed us to control our gimbal speeds in all three of the flight modes. Your normal mode, the pitch and yaw can be nice and smooth for normal flight, while tripod mode can be extremely smooth and sport mode can be really responsive and quick. You can adjust your smoothness as well to get nice cinematic looking results here as well. It's something to experiment around with, but I typically use tripod mode to get the most smoothed out and slow pitch and yaw for my gimbal speed. And all of those speeds are pretty low with pretty generous amounts of smoothing as well. Those are my main five tips for the DJI Fly app. I do have some more miscellaneous tips as well as some hopefully rapid fire tips to give you here as well. So my next tip for the Mavic Air 2 is to know that hyperlapses are easy to make but it's really hard to get natural looking hyperlapses. Hyperlapses tend to be better when they're drawn out over long distances. If you're too tight to your subject, it'll be really jarry and jerking to watch. 
Uh, I learned this the hard way. Whenever I was going out, I didn't allow myself enough room to get those nice long sweeping hyperlapses. So they are easy to make, but they are something that you have to experiment around with and really learn the best long sweeping settings to make with those hyperlapses on your Mavic Air 2. As far as the resolutions are concerned, not all hyperlapses are shot in 8K. The free and waypoint modes are 8K, while the circle and course lock modes are 1080p. My next tip is to get the fly more combo and to buy the less aggressive ND filters as well. I go over this in my Mavic Air 2 accessories video, so I suggest checking that video out when you're done with this video. I'll leave a link to that video at the end. Another tip for the Mavic Air 2 is to use the quick shot modes if you're quickly filming something and need to get the shot. The quick shot modes are easy to use pre-programmed flight modes to achieve a certain flight path for your drone. The different quick shot modes are Droney, Helix, Circle, Boomerang, and Asteroid. The quick shot modes are pretty simple. Some of them are a little gimmicky like Asteroid, but there are some helpful ones like Circle. And if you're filming yourself and you just want to get the shot quickly, these come in really clutch. Okay, those weren't so rapid fire, so these last five I'm just going to do really fast. One, leave your phone case on. You don't need to remove your phone case to put it in the Mavic Air 2 controller anymore. Two, remove the cable from the controller first before attaching your phone. If you open up the controller and then put your phone in and don't remove this first, you're gonna have to take your phone out, take this cord out, and then plug it into your phone. I've done it plenty of times and I wrote that tip down multiple times when I was putting these things into my phone. So tip number three is don't worry about the antennas of the Mavic Air 2 controller either. The antennas are located in the top of the controller. So they're always out. You don't need to aim them or point them like other DJI drones of the past. My next tip is that the memory card on your drone is on the opposite side that it says Mavic Air 2 on these legs. So it says Mavic Air 2 on this leg. So the memory card is on this side. If you've flown a Mavic 2 Pro, this is really confusing because the memory card is on the same side as the writing. So that's just another quirk that you have to remember if you have these two drones. My last tip is that the USB-C port that you manage the internal storage is on the same side as the Mavic Air 2 printing. So if you think Mavic Air 2 side printing, internal storage, other side is the SD card. So those have been my tips and tricks for the Mavic Air 2. I've been flying this drone for a while and I still feel like I learn something every time I go out and film with it. If you're interested in my free Mavic Air 2 course, LUT pack, and pre-flight checklist, check out the link in the description for more information. Leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new here. I have more Mavic Air 2 videos on my channel, so be sure to check those out as well, and I'll see you guys in the next one.